Hi, my name is Riso. Welcome to my fourth Facebook Live. Thank you for joining me. I'm excited that you're here with me. I am the owner of Jewish Gift Place, and in 2017, my business uh, will be online for 10 years. And um, I'm excited to bring to you Handmade Judaica. And today, specifically, I'm going to be talking about Evil Eyes and the Hamsa and the artist Machal Golan, who makes these incredible pieces into jewelry. So uh, the, the meaning of the Hamsa in the middle and the evil eye goes back thousands of years, so I'm going to be talking about that. I'm going to be talking about Machal Golan and what inspires her and uh, having her as an artist at Jewish Gift Place. And then I'll be getting into the meanings of the evil eye and the Hamsa. So let me get started. This is a picture of me and Michal Golan. It was taken in 2012 at the Philadelphia Buyer's Market of American Craft. This is where I've been going there once a year, I'd say for about six or seven years. It's held in February in Philadelphia, and it only is for handmade works of art made by um, artists from America and Canada. And the artist has to be there to represent themselves. So in 2012, I asked Michal to pose for a photo with me. And I just wanted to um, show you the Judaica that Michal Golan makes and tell you about Michal Golan. Um, Michal has been designing jewelry for 35 years and she was born in Israel and now she's in New York City where she's been for a couple of decades. She's a painter, a printer, and a jewelry designer. She creates handmade jewelry and Judaica like the Hamsa hand and she makes menorahs and mezuzahs. And as you could see, they com combine an antique look with modern designs. Um, she's inspired by Byzantine and Victorian jewelry. And as you can see, she loves the use of pearls, semi-precious stones, crystals, and glass to embellish her uh, ornate designs, which make them really stand out. Um, I'm not kidding when I say that people stop me on the street and I hear from customers who say they have stopped wherever they go uh, to ask about the jewelry that they wear. Um, and she's inspired by Middle Eastern art, particularly mosaic styles. Um, I interviewed her, let me check. I interviewed her um, a few years ago and I gave her a series of 10 questions and uh, she told me that she's an avid museum and gallery visitor and she's constantly finding inspiration in the art world. Uh, in an interview with Michal, uh, she also told me that she began her jewelry career as a student in graduate school at New York University, and she began making jewelry to sell at craft shows and street festivals to support herself. When asked what she loves most about this career, she says the freedom to make a living while doing what she loves, creating art. Um, her pieces are sold all around the world, and when I asked her if she had any idea if she'd be this successful, she said that as a graduate student, she never predicted that she would be so successful in the jewelry world. And she thinks she found success because she loves what she does. And she hopes that the joy that she experiences creating the pieces shows in the work themselves. So I'm going to show off some, um, some of her pieces. And then I'm going to get into the, the meanings of some of them. The first one I'm going to tell you about is the Hamsa. So let me tell you about the Hamsa. The Hamsa, also known as Hamesh, Hamsa, Hand of Miriam, and Hand of Fatima, is an ancient Middle Eastern amulet symbolizing the hand of God. In all faiths, it is a protective sign. It brings its wearer happiness, luck, health, and good fortune. And before I read the Hamsa prayer, I just want to show you something. This is a Hamsa hand that my son, my youngest son, who's now 12 years old, he made when he was in nursery school when he was four years old. And I love this saying. I've kept this. I hang it in my office. It's always there. So I just want to tell you what this uh, Hamsa prayer reads. And then I'll read uh, another Hamsa prayer that I enclose with all jewelry that I sell uh, at Jewish Gift Place. It says, let no sadness come through this gate. Let no trouble come to this dwelling. Let no conflict be in this place. Let this home be filled with the blessing of joy and peace. I think that's absolutely beautiful. And around this time of year, around Hanukkah, um, the wall homses are incredibly popular. I don't have any to show you today, but uh, you could see them on the website. So let me just get back to the Hamsa prayer that I enclosed with the jewelry. That one um, 
says, let no sadness come to this heart, let no trouble come to these arms, let no conflict come to these eyes, let my soul be filled with the blessing of joy and peace. And I wanted to tell you more about the Hamsa. Although the Hamsa hand has been symbolic in Islam and Judaism for centuries, archaeological digs in the Middle East provide evidence that the Hamsa predates these religions and originated with the Phoenicians and was used as a protective symbol for an ancient Middle Eastern goddess. And the Hamsa hand has always been associated with a female entity offering protection from evil and misfortune. Now the word Hamsa um, has meaning in, in Hebrew and in Arabic. Hamsa or Hamesh means five. There are five digits on the Hamsa hand and uh, the number five also has additional symbolic meaning uh, for Jews in, in Islam. Five, Hamesh in Hebrew, represents the five books of the Torah for the Jews. It also symbolizes the fifth letter of the Hebrew alphabet, hey, and which represents one of God's holy names. And it symbolizes the five pillars of Islam for Sunnis and the five people of the cloak for Shiites. Okay. Next, I want to tell you about, you know what, at this point, I think I will show off some um, Hamsa jewelry for you to see what some of the beautiful pieces look like. So I have several, I just got a shipment from Michal Golan, so before I ship these out to my customers, I want to show off these pieces to you because they are so beautiful. Oh boy, I must have this on backwards. But this is a hamsa. It's a hanging hamsa. You know what? Let me get this on the correct way. Uh, this is a beautiful hamsa. And uh, as I said before, she makes her pieces out of semi-precious stones and freshwater pearls and Swarovski crystals. And this is a unique piece because it has that, um, that drop, which is beautiful. This is another Hamsa. Uh, the unique thing about this Hamsa, it, well, it's made by with enamel <laughs> and glass beads, and the chain is blue. That's unique. And all of her pieces come with a, um, a four-inch extender with a little tag that has her company name, Michal Golan, on it. So this is another beautiful piece. This is a medium Hamsa necklace, which is actually pretty large, if you could tell. Oh, just for comparison, which I'll, and I'll show you another one. What I'm wearing right now is a small Hamsa necklace. This is a medium Hamsa necklace. The smalls are by far the most popular, and some people think that if you're a larger person, a medium Hamsa would look well. And some people love the medium Hamsa, although the small one is uh, by far the most popular one. But this is gorgeous, and it comes with a beaded chain. Now I'm going to show you a small Hamsa. This is another beautiful uh, Hamsa. And I'd say the Hamsas on my website are, are some of the best-selling symbols that I sell. I think they even outsell Star of David jewelry because Hamsas uh, transcend religion, um, so they appeal to, to people of any faith. So that is another beautiful Hamsa necklace. This next one is a Hamsa of, with garnet. This is a small Hamsa necklace. It's a different design than the other one that I just showed you, but it is also, that that is a garnet stone in there. Um, and it's beautiful. And just to show you, it comes with a, it's beaded for part of the way, and then it's a, a double gold chain for the balance of the necklace. This I absolutely love. Before I put it on the uh, the white paper to show you better, I don't know if you could see this, there's a ring. Oh, wait. Do you see that now? There is a gold chain that hangs from it. Now let me put it on some white paper so that you could see it better. 
This is a gorgeous piece. Um, it's a beautiful statement piece. It's made with two tones, so it, it could be worn with any uh, type of jewelry. And, and there's a hematite stone in there. Okay, that is it for the Hamsa jewelry. So now I'm going to move on to the evil eye and talk about the symbolism of the evil eye. The belief in the evil eye dates back almost 3,000 years to ancient Greece and Rome and is one of the strongest symbolic images in the world. Wearing an evil eye as an amulet is believed to provide protection against evil forces. The evil eye has symbolism in almost every country in the world and in every religion, such as Judaism, Islam, Hindu, Buddhism, and Christianity. I'm just going to show you some other evil eyes. They, they go back for thousands of years. That's a, a mo mosaic piece of artwork with the eye on it. Um, and uh, I wanted to tell you more about it. The evil eye is thought of as a look given to inflict harm, suffering, or some form of bad luck, luck on those that it is cast upon. It is a look which clearly states that one intends for something bad to happen to the object of one's focus, either out of jealousy or pure malice. The superstition of the evil eye holds that the malicious look is powerful enough to bring about actual disaster for the unfortunate person that is the receiver of the glare. In ancient Greece and Rome, it was believed that the evil eye was the largest threat to anyone who had been praised too much or received admiration beyond what they truly deserved. The praised person would become so swollen with pride that he or she would bring about his or her own doom via the evil eye, which was believed to be able to cause physical and mental illness. In fact, any disease which did not have an immediate obvious cause was thought to be caused by the evil eye. It was thought that the gods and goddesses were punishing those who had become too proud of their achievements and destroyed them with the power of the evil eye to restore them to the level of mere mortals. A belief in the evil eye is widespread on every continent. The Middle East, Asia, Europe, and Central America all fear the evil eye. The most popular method of escaping the evil eye's effects in many cultures is by the use of evil eye talismans. Here's a piece of uh, ancient jewelry. Uh, so it could be warded off by evil eye talismans, evil eye symbols, and evil eye jewelry. These are meant to reflect the power of the evil look. So Mahal Golan um, has taken this uh, symbol that goes back thousands of years and cr has created beautiful jewelry, which I'm going to show off some of those pieces to you today. The first piece I'm going to show you is this gold evil eye necklace. This is, this might be the most popular piece of jewelry that I sell on the entire website. I've sold more of these than anything else and I'll tell you why. It did not hurt that Melissa Gorgia of The Real Housewives of New Jersey wore this on her show. And she wore it a couple of times. I, I think at least twice she wore it. This is back in, this is at least four or five years ago that, that she wore this evil eye. And then the actress Christina Milian wore this on an appearance of Good Morning America. So ever since then, since there are people who follow the fashions of The Real Housewives of New Jersey or any housewife, um, they find this. So this is a gold uh, evil eye necklace. It's surrounded by Swarovski crystals. Um, it comes on a triple chain. And uh, it's unbelievably popular and beautiful. People love it. Now, Michal Golan, who is incredibly prol prolific, she has hundreds of pieces in her collection. And it's not just Judaica. Evil Eyes and Hamses aren't Judaica. Um, she makes hearts and other shapes and lots of pieces, but um, her Hamsas and Evil Eyes are probably one of the most popular pieces. This Evil Eye comes in, I'd have to say at least 15 to 20 colors. This is a sapphire blue Evil Eye, but it comes up uh, in red, in gray enamel, and some of them have semi-precious stones, some of them have um, Swarovski crystals, but this is an example of a sapphire Evil Eye. 
And I also have with me today a bracelet. This is a, um, the, the band is leather. It's a double stranded leather bracelet. And this is a small size evil eye and it's pink. And this also comes in at least a dozen colors. And it has the Swarovski crystal in the middle. So that is my collection of Evil Eye and Hamsa jewelry. But also, since I got this shipment of Machal Golan yesterday, I would be remiss if I didn't show you some other pieces that came in. These are the Star of David, which I talked about last week. It's the symbol on the Israeli flag, and it's represented Zionism um, going back over a century. And it's been found, it's been noted in Ju Judaism for centuries. But this is a just like that other evil eye bracelet. It's a double stranded. It's a double stranded leather bracelet. There's a star of David in the middle, and it's covered with Swarovski crystals in shades of blue and clear. And this is a gorgeous piece. This is another uh, gorgeous, I love this Star of David bracelet. It's two-tone, it's modern, it's stylish, and uh, her pieces appeal to people all over the world. Uh, this is going to a customer in Germany. So it's a beautiful piece. And the last piece I'm going to show you is a popular, it's another popular necklace from Michal Golan. It's small. Uh, it's simple and it's gorgeous. There's a garnet in the middle of this Star of David piece of jewelry. So I wanted to thank you for joining me here today. You could see the entire collection of Evil Eye Jewelry at jewishgiftplace.com slash evil-eye.html and you will see a huge selection of Evil Eye necklaces, Evil Eye bracelets, and evil eye earrings. And now that you know the meaning of it, uh, it, it takes on even more symbolism to wear uh, a piece of evil eye jewelry. Also, we have even more Hamsas in the Mahal Golan collection. Um, Hamsa necklaces, bracelets, earrings. Uh, you know what? When I get back to, uh, when you see me, I'm wearing a pair of Mahal Golan Hamsa earrings right now. The wall Hamsas, as I said, are beautiful. The Hamsa keychains which that size is the large, which is really too large to be a necklace, but it's absolutely gorgeous as a keychain. And also um, other artists make Hamsa sculptures. You could see the entire Hamsa collection at jewishgiftplace.com slash hamsa-hand.html. So I wanted to thank everybody for joining me here today. These are the uh, Mahagalan earrings that I love. Uh, that I was talking about. Uh, they're popular also. But thank you for joining me. I'd love for you to um, like my Facebook page. I have played, you could visit my video page uh, so you could see all the videos that I've been posting. Uh, I'll be back next week and I'll be talking about menorahs and I hope everybody has a wonderful Thanksgiving. I'm not sure if I will post before Thanksgiving or after, or probably before Thanksgiving just to show off some of the pieces that I have. But uh, visit you could sign up for the newsletter where I talk about sales and I articles that are of interest to me, quotes that are of interest. I have a contest every week, so you could check that out. Go to uh, facebook.com slash Jewish, uh, Jewish Gift Place to see this week's contest. And I'd love for you to um, tag along more to see what's going on. For joining me today, I hope you would uh, take advantage of a 10th 10% off coupon of all Mahal Golan jewelry, whether it's um, Mahal Golan, uh, whether it's a Hamsa, an evil eye, mezuzahs, menorahs, wall Hamsas, or keychains, you could take 10% off anything. Use coupon code MG103. That is good through next Wednesday, November 23rd, the day before Thanksgiving. And um, let me just give you a sneak preview of what's coming up next week. This is a menorah. This is one. This is by Gary Rosenthal. This is an absolutely gorgeous, unique menorah. It is. Um, it's one of a kind. Um, maybe it looks better that way as a treble clef. 
but for the music lover, this would be a wonderful, wonderful gift. But I have more menorahs to show you, personalized menorahs, multi-designed wood menorahs, and uh, I'm excited to be showing those to you next week. So goodbye, thank you for joining me, and have a wonderful week. Bye.